Hello YouTube, this is episode 7 of Let's Play Star Wars Galaxies and today we're going to be covering the basic profession of Scout. Now I've been using Scout as I've been working on the combat professions that I have that allow me to make some money. So I've done some training here but this should pretty much cover everything. So, as with the other reviews of the professions, we're actually going to be doing two videos, this one being the first one, where I show you the overall basics, and then I will come back later after I've mastered the profession and provide you with a full review of everything that the scout can build, all of their abilities, and everything that they can do. Now, if we come over here, we see that the scout profession is in the basic profession area of the profession list. And what that does, or what that tells us is anybody can become a novice scout, provided that you have enough skill points available. And I do recommend that you actually get Novice Scout because of how helpful it is to just about every character that you would make, even if it is something that you would end up giving up in the long run. We are currently running over to the Scout Trainer in Theed. So here we are in Theed. The start part is just over here. And this is where the Scout Trainer is. So, Scout is a utilitarian and support profession. And what that means itself is it doesn't really give you anything to work on its own, but it does give you quite a lot to benefit a lot of other basic professions. And even the elite and hybrid professions. So in Novice Scout, we get the schematic for the base camp kit, the Lepenzine dart, the wire mesh trap, and that's that. We get skill modifiers of camping plus five, creature harvesting plus 15, creature knowledge plus five, and we get plus five in trapping. So trapping is not actually a trap that you lay down on the ground and then expect some creature to walk into. It's actually a thrown weapon that applies some kind of dot or negative effect. So the Lepenzine dart actually poisons the, the creature that you're targeting and it can only be applied to creatures. It has no effect on an NPC or another player. All of the traps are creature only. The wire mesh trap is a sticky wire mesh that distracts the creature and causes a small amount of damage. The basic camp kit is one of the most important features of the scout and that actually lets you set up a building out in the wild somewhere that will keep enemy creatures away unless it's really really high leveled. It gives you a safe place to sit. It allows for medics to perform wound healing. It allows for entertainers to provide their mind healing and battle fatigue, battle fatigue healing. Doctors can apply buffs inside of a camp, and entertainers can also apply their buffs inside of a camp. Additionally, if you have any if you have any vehicles that you need to pull out or pets, that happens immediately, just like you're in a city. Whereas if you're just out in the wild somewhere. They make you wait 15 seconds, and if you enter combat, 
it cancels the timer and then you don't get whatever it was that you were calling. So that applies for faction pets, droid pets, creature pets, any vehicle. And so that's that's a pretty big deal. It was, at one point, the only way for you to pull out a pet or a vehicle in the wild. So in the early days of Star Wars Galaxies, you had to have Scout as part of your mix. And that made Scout incredibly important. However, the devs listened to everybody saying how inconvenient it was. The devs changed the game so that the camp was no longer required to pull out a vehicle. It just made it faster. Making the scouts slightly less important as an overall profession. Anyone who has scout can essentially solo the game. It is really, really useful. In... Nope. Nope. In Survival 1, we get the Forage ability. And the Forage ability provides us with the... Why doesn't this thing ever come out the right size? The Forage ability provides us with the ability to search for food. So if we do a forage out in the wild, we have a pretty good probability of finding some kind of food. In this example, we get an onion that gives us a mind buff of 500 for one minute. This is also something else that I found. And this is Etos Uzan or whatever. And it gives you plus 50 to your action health and mine for 11 minutes. So that's pretty decent. Now, exploration and hunting both use scouting experience. So both of these trees require the same experience. Trapping requires trapping experience. And survival requires survival experience. So let's start off over here with scouting experience. Scouting experience is gained in a few ways. The most scouting experience that you will get will be by harvesting hide meat or bones, hide meat or bones from creatures. So if you kill a creature, you can get its hide or its bones or its meat. And for whatever reason, if you click on the hide or you tell it that you want to have the hide, the meat is somehow lost. And if you take the meat, the bones are somehow lost. So is the hide. So I don't really get that. I mean, you should get all three. But when you do that, you will end up with... There's my backpack. So when you harvest the hide... You can end up with this in your inventory. Currently, I have a whopping of two units of Nabooian leathery hide. And there, <clears throat> excuse me, there are different types of hide. There's furry hide, there's scaly hide, and leathery hide. And I think there are a couple others. And then there's also the planet that it comes from. So there's also meat, which I don't know if I have any of. Okay, here's insect meat. And it just comes pretty much in a rectangular container. Then there are bones, which come in these squarish 
containers. Now, as a novice scout, you will want to focus on having a large amount of bones and a large amount of hide. You can use the meat to feed a creature pet if it is a carnivorous animal. So later on, we will do a creature handler review. And when we do a creature handler review, we will be harvesting large amounts of meat so that we can feed the pets. This meat is also very useful for medics as it usually has fairly high resources. See, the OQ is 934. That's pretty good. The OQ on this domesticated weed is only 855. But we have 934 over here, so the meat is usually usually good, but you don't usually get a lot of it. So we can get our scouting experience from performing harvests. Over here in Exploration 2, we get the ability to perform Mask Scent. What that does is Mask Scent gives you the ability to hide yourself from aggressive creatures. And it's also important for creature handlers that want to tame wild animals. But we'll get into that much later. With Mask Scent on, assuming you are fairly close to the challenge level of the aggressive creature that you are approaching, you have a fairly decent chance of avoiding detection, which will allow you to go stealthily through the area. Now, if it is significantly higher of a challenge level than you are, then you are very likely to be found out. So your mask scent is really only that useful if you are in an area that is relatively close to your to your level of challenge level. But mask scent is very handy even if you're going into an area that you are likely to be found, there's still a possibility that you can go by undetected. The skill modifiers from the exploration branch is terrain negotiation. And terrain negotiation lets you run up a hill at a faster rate. So it takes your skill modifier and the angle of the slope into consideration. And then it gives you a faster running speed based on the evaluation of those two. You also get burst run efficiency plus 20. What that means is it doesn't affect your duration of burst run, but it will decrease the amount of your three pools that it takes out from you if you activate burst run. When you activate burst run, your three stats drop some. With this burst run efficiency, you actually are able to have that effect be lessened. With mask scent, or I mean uh, exploration three, you get more mask scent and more terrain negotiation and then burst run efficiency and mask scent. So as you progress up this tree, your mask scent ability will increase. And I believe master also gives you mask scent. So you can get up to a fairly high amount of mask scent, making it more and more probable that you will go undetected. In hunting, you get creature harvesting and creature knowledge. Creature harvesting means that you will inherently get more 
out of the resources that you are that you are extracting from a creature. So if you're pulling the bones out, you will get more bones with the higher level of creature har harvesting that you have. Oh, and uh, creature knowledge. If I can find a creature, maybe there's one over here. It doesn't look like I can click on that Gualma. No. Cannot click on them. They're usually... random mobs out here. Okay, so if you click on one, that's rude. So that guy is AFK hunting. Let's run over here to this night spider. Doesn't appear that there are any campers over here. So if you find a creature out in the wild, you click and hover over it and you go to examine. You get a window with no words. Okay, so now this time we have words. So the amount of information that this window provides will increase as your creature knowledge increases. So we get information about its armor rating, its resistances, if it has any, if it's aggressive, if it's a stalker. Stalker means that it will follow you. Tameable is a no because it's not a baby. And only creature handlers can, can get babies to become tame. Hide type, bone type, and meat type. The reason why these are dashes is not because I can't figure it out, but it is because you can only get meat from an insect. And then here's the challenge level. It is a yellow star. So if we see just over here, this little gear is yellow. So it gives us three yellow stars. A night spider looks like a tough fight. Yellow is just above your level and your level is white. So if we find, which by the way, these things are almost always wrong. You should be able to handle most reds. So the amount of information that appears over here will increase as you increase your your creature knowledge. Then in hunting two, we get more creature harvesting, more creature knowledge, and a creature two hit bonus. This is applicable only to people with ranged weapons. So it doesn't give you a bonus when you're holding a melee weapon, which I am right now. But it gives you a, a bonus modifier so that you can hit basically more often and more accurately when targeting creatures has no effect on NPCs. Then in three, we get more harvesting and knowledge. And then in four, we get more harvesting and knowledge. Trapping. In fact, I don't think I have any. Nope. Okay, well, what we'll do is we'll skip over trapping for the moment because I don't have any traps on me. And we will talk about the survival tree. In Novice Scout, we get the basic camp kit. That's a schematic. And that can be found right here. So I'm going to have to run pretty far away in order to be able to lay down the camp. So we'll, we'll get to that in a bit.
But we get this basic camp kit. We also start off with two types of traps. And then in Survival 1, we get Forage, which is really handy. In fact, oh, that's Medical Forage. Let's go over here. So this is the Forage command. So I poke my fingers into the dirt. And it says my attempt was a success. So I got another onion. 500 to mind. And you can get various types of fruits when you do a forage on dry land. If we run over here to the edge of the water, you can usually get worms and grubs for fishing. And it occurs to me that I forgot to create my fishing pole for this episode. My attempt was a success and I got worm bait. So if I had a fishing pole, I could use worm bait to go fishing and fishing is another method of acquiring scouting experience. So we get scouting experience by harvesting. We get scouting experience by using mask scent and we get scouting experience by getting some badges, that being some of these badges here can provide scouting experience. And they're really more of the has explored encountered the mysterious place of the Woolly Mander on Yavin 1 or rather Yavin 4. So you can get some experience by performing badges, but it's minimal and it's kind of, you're not going to be getting a whole branch by doing that. And you can get scouting experience by fishing. In fact, let's see if I can make... a fishing pole real quick. Inert. And what's over here? Metal. And metal. Bear with me for just a moment. And actually, while we are waiting for that, let's go and kill something so that we can do a harvest on it. I'm on the wrong toolbar. And I missed. Okay, so we have a dead creature here. If you bring up the radial menu, there's a harvest resources, and it's an insect, so it only provides meat. So there we go. I got four units of Nabooian insect meat, and I got 54 points of scouting experience. And if we do the same thing, four units and 54 points of experience. So the 
amount of units that you get from the creature that you kill is really de what determines how much experience that you get. So if you kill some, if you harvest from something that is considerably bigger, then you will get more. You will get more experience points. Okay, here's our fishing pole. Now, if I take my worm bait, drag it onto the fishing pole. Now I've got a number one above the fishing pole. I have my fishing pole equipped. And it seems that it's better to cast closer to the shore than it is to cast farther out. Then we will follow forage gallop. I've forgotten how to start fishing. Oh, right there. Okay, so status waiting. Ooh, just got a nibble. Let's tug up. Okay, so we're going to tug to the right. Oh, I just got a bite. I've caught something. Now, if we just run over. Okay, so I caught something called a bluefish. It is <laughs> 0.1 meter. So about 10 centimeters long, and it's a type of bluefish. Now, if we come over here and we do a fillet fish, Oh, by the way, I got, you received 20 points of wilderness survival experience. Oh, I was wrong. It gives you survival experience, not scouting experience. After we have performed the fillet maneuver, we now have fish meat with a decay resistance of 949, flavor of 919, Potential energy of 724 and OQ of 634. This is actually really good fish. Now you can see we have a, on our fishing pole, quantity 18. That means the bait that we have. If we come over here to open. So this worm bait somehow translates into 18 uses. I guess you get six uses per bait. There must be... No, nope, start fishing is not over there. It wouldn't be over here, would it? Not very likely to be. Not very likely to be over here either. It's weird that I don't have the I guess the only option is to 
is to do it like this again. Oh, I got caught in vegetation. Let's do a small reel in. Your line comes in snag free. Now we have to wait for something to happen. You toss aside your used bait. You reel in your line and stop fishing. Well, I've still got two in there, so... Fish density is apparently zero. Vegetation... Oh no, that's... Okay, I got a nibble, so you want to do a tug. Okay, tug right. You reel in your line and stop fishing. Okay, apparently I didn't do that one right. So if your vegetation has got a lot of stars... Well, that's mean. So if your vegetation has a lot of stars, then your bait status will degrade faster. So we need to wait for this to change to a bite, and then we do a reel in. Now you need to get within 2 meters. Line range is 4.22 meters. And I again did not get a fish. Where'd my window go? Oh boy, this must be an exciting video. Alright, well let's just move on, shall we? Find my long vibro axe. So you can get more bait, which are the little driblets that you get from flying the fish. So we got chum bait. And we got this fish, which is now a decoration. If you want to keep it, which I don't. And then it gave us 44 units of fish meat for a 10 centimeter fish. That's a lot of, that's a lot of meat. And it's pretty high quality. 
So back to over here. In survival, you get experience points, as we've just discovered by fishing. You get experience points by placing down a camp, and you get experience points by grinding the crafting for a scout, which means making camps and making traps. So a lot of people prefer to use the camping method because it uses less resources. But in my opinion, the best and most efficient method of going up the survival tree is in fact the crafting method. So if we I haven't been putting a lot of of effort going into trapping. But let's say we pick our Lepenzine dart here, which requires three and three. And let's find a box of bones. So here we have a box of 65. Why does this window repeatedly resize itself? Okay, so we've got some hide over here. We've got some bone over here. And now you'll want to review the artisan crafting video for how all of this works. But by doing that, we will set up the crafting tool so it'll pick our resource to make. Okay, so I do want a prototype. And I'll just start clicking. And I got 12 points of experience per craft. Considering that it only uses three and three, that's a pretty good amount of experience points per unit. And actually, let's stop that. And let's see what other darts can I make. Let's make a noisemaker. I don't know what's going on with this thing. So let's close that. And now I'll make some... You just click on the wrong button. No. Okay, I think that was my fault. So let's come back over here. Click over here. Click next. Now close that. And over here. And now I'm getting 30 points of experience. The crafting tool has a... Oh. oh, my inventory is full. All right, well, let's... Just only keep two of those. Now, when you're crafting your traps, you don't really want to do them in practice mode because you get experience points in trapping when performing or when using traps in actual combat. 
So it's best. How does the crafting tool list something in it still? I just checked all those. Okay, well, I've got two. And you can see that I got 30 experience points for making both of these and 12 for making both of those. And I do not have trapping or survival on here. So let's go over here. And let's see, I've got 1,005 points. So I, I brought this line up a pretty decent amount. And it really wouldn't take all that long for you to grind through all of these. Now in Survival 1, we get the Forage Command. In Survival 2, we get a new type of camp called the Multi-Person Camp Kit. Survival 3, we don't get anything. In Survival 4, we get the Improved Camp Kit, which is a nice looking camp. And then down here, we get Camping plus 5, Foraging plus 5, Foraging numbers, the higher the number means the higher the probability that you will successfully get something. And camping, each of the camp kits, do I have a camp on me? Seems I do not. Where did my camp go? Look at that, it keeps resizing itself. Oh, was it in practice mode? was not in practice mode. Oh, I bet it was stuck in my tool again. So it doesn't list it, but each camp kit has a basically a requirement for a given camping amount. So my skill mods, camping is currently 10. The multi-person camp kit would have to have a at least a 10, you would figure, or perhaps something higher. The way it works out is you can actually get, if somebody were to give you, or give me in this case, a multi-person camp kit, I would be able to use the multi-person, but I would not be able to use the improved camp kit. Because you can usually use a camp that's been made one level higher than what you currently are. When you use a camp, you get survival experience based on the number of people that are in that have visited the camp and the number of people that, or I mean the amount of time that the camp has been used. But we will get into the camp kits shortly. And I keep getting distracted. So you can get survival experience by crafting. You can get survival experience by foraging you can get survival experience by using a camp. And the easiest way to get that experience is actually the crafting route. 
So you can grind through these boxes pretty quickly. And then all you have to do is just go find some random low level creatures that will give you hide or bones. And then you're good to go. As far as trapping goes, we now have some traps somewhere. Okay, so let's come over here. So let's put a Lepenzine dart there and a noisemaker there. So I believe you need to be 25 meters away or less. Now you can see that I'm getting experience points every time it successfully works. So 105 trapping experience right there. Now I will just sit here and keep throwing traps until I need to stop. Okay, so we gave up. Now my trapping experience is not on here. Let's find that. Okay, I currently have 765. My next video, I'm going to do a video on novice medic so I'm not really going to describe what I'm doing here but what I am doing is is simply healing myself I have a macro that heals me and then I've managed to get the timer just right so that when it says you are now ready to heal more damage I heal my damage And we should be ready pretty soon. Okay, so now I just need to ready up my traps. I have a lot. of stuff in my inventory. Where is my other noisemaker? Here we go. So I'm just going to tank it. Until I need to run away again. Now, you don't actually need to complete or win the fight, which is different from how it works with weapon experience. Oh, I actually killed it. Way to pay attention. And you can see that I am a litter bug. So I had 768. Now I have 1,000... Is that a 3? 1,395. So it's best to build up an inventory of 
all of your traps and you can see I just blew through quite a few of them. So build up a pile in your inventory of all of the traps and then just use them all. And you can quickly get through trapping experience and you will easily be able to get through this whole branch. And the only way to get trapping experience is just that you throw traps at, at creatures. As you move up in trapping, you get new types of traps available to you. So you start off with the Lepenzine Dart and Wire Mesh Trap. And then you get the glow, jet, the glow Juice Trap and then the Sharp Bone Spur. And then you get the Noisemaker and then you get the Stink Bomb. The Glow Wire Trap, the Fenton Scene Dart, and then the Adhesive Mesh. So as you move up, you not only get better traps with better dots, you can use all of the traps together on the same mob. But if we have, let's say, the glow juice trap, which puts a bioluminescent glow onto the target, making characters with ranged abilities able to hit it better. If you throw one on it and the glow juice is active, you throw another one, it will not work. It'll just say that your your dart did not affect the name of whatever it was. So as far as, because these two use the same experience, which one, you might ask, is the best one to go for? Creature harvesting means that you will get more hide and bones every time you extract. But mask scent is very important. So I would recommend going up to Exploration 2 and then Hunting 4 and then Exploration 4. Now while you're doing all of the harvesting, you will be crafting traps. So you'll be getting XP, you'll be crafting camps, so you'll be getting the XP. And then you'll be using traps while you're killing them. So this whole profession goes by very quickly. Now as far as the camping goes, let's go ahead and deploy a camp in the slowest vehicle possible. Now there are no macros to begin camping. And there are no macros to aid in camping. So you have to do it manually. I think just before that hill, we get to the point of being able to actually drop a camp. Now there is a problem with camping. You cannot be too close to a lair, and you cannot be too close to a building, and you cannot be inside of city limits. So let's actually try right over here, and then find our camp. All right, so this is the camp. We've got two tiki torches, and these actually produce light. So if it's dark out, it will illuminate the area. There's a campfire, which also produces light. Even though you've got a personal light, that it gives you a small amount of 
light around your character. These actually produce more light. You can't go into the tent. So it's not like Hermione's tent in Harry Potter. So you can't go inside. You can't do anything with the actual camp. Now there are camps in the ranger level that give you a lot of capabilities. But all of the scout traps or scout camps are pretty much the same. So you've got a seat you can sit in. Sitting in a seat and sitting on the ground increase your health regeneration rates. If you're sitting in a camp, your wounds will actually slowly, and I mean very slowly, go away. But battle, fe battle fatigue will not. When you're in a camp, you can actually have your wounds treated by a doctor or a medic. When you're in a camp, you can have your wounds treated by an entertainer. And the medic series, or the doctor's and the entertainers can apply a buff. So if you're out running around and you have a buff capable character with you, they can buff you. You can run out into the wild and then when your buffs wear off, they can put them back on. Also, if you are AFK sampling and you are not inside of a city, then it is a very good idea for an artisan to also have scout so they can drop a camp and then start your AFK macro for hand sampling. The fire, as it was explained by the devs, the fire keeps dangerous creatures away. So Random creatures will not just, you know, come strolling by and kill you, or at least they're less likely to. So if you're an artisan and you're doing hand sampling, it's a very good idea to drop a camp. And also, if you're a scout and not an artisan, although you really should be both, regardless of what your template is, if you do have scout, and you come across a great big group of people that are hand sampling, you can run into the group and drop a camp. And then all of those people will be visitors in your camp. You will be helping them by keeping critters away. And the more people that are in your camp, the more survival experience you get from camping. So there's a little computer terminal over here. Let's come over here and do a camp status. So it's been up for three minutes and 56 seconds. We've had one visitor. And also, if you are out running around and you see the... Where are you going? Where are you going, buddy? Stop running. So if you're out running around and you see one of these just sitting out in the distance, be nice and trespass. That way the number of visitors that they have will go up and you will get the benefit or they will get the benefit of having more experience points. So if you're out doing hand sampling, drop a camp. When you're sitting here in camp, you're Wounds and health regenerate faster. So it's good to be able to drop a camp when you're out creature hunting. And while you're here, you may as well do some crafting. So restock up on your traps. Restock up on your camps. And if you're an artisan, you can do your crafting here also. So the more time that you spend in camp, the more experience that the camp will give you. 
and the amount of experience maximum that a camp can give you is based on its level. So this is a basic camp, and then the next one was a multi-person, and then the next one was an improvised. So where you wouldn't really want to have to use this for leveling your survival branch, it is quite handy to have... I just totally lost my train of thought. It's kind of late here. It is quite handy to get experience from this, even though this is not your primary purpose, right? You're not trying to grind the survival branch. You're just using it. So if we come back, it's been up for 6 minutes and 21 seconds. So at 15 minutes, if you've had one visitor, you will get the maximum amount of experience points. And I think it's like 350 XP for a one-person camp. Now, the way it works out is if you have another person, you will get to the maximum cap of 350 or whatever the number is sooner than 15 minutes. So in theory, if you had a whole army walk right through here, you could get your maximum XP cap in a couple seconds. When you're done, you want to come over here and do a disband camp. If you just get in your vehicle and you drive away while the camp is still active, the camp will not provide you with any experience points at all. So you always want to come over here and do a disband. Also, when you're in camp, you can pull out pets without having to wait. You can pull out vehicles without having to wait. So camps are very, are very handy. And there are even ranger level camps that have crafting stations. I think they really missed out on the ranger camping skills when they were developing the game live. Because I think it would have been great to have a ranger camp that acted like a house that would be permanent, that could hold items, and you would just you know, pay taxes on it like a regular house. So that pretty much covers everything that there is for Scout. I'm going to come back after I've mastered Scout, and I'm going to show you the... Oh, actually, there was one other thing. The Forage command is capable of foraging on the ground. It's capable of foraging in a lair. And it's capable of performing a forage on a creature. So when you forage inside of a lair, you run up to the lair, you click on it, and you use the radial item that says uh, search layer. So let's actually take a mission. Shalpat, no. Flute are insects. Chubas are amphibians. A copy. You know, I've been trying to get a copy missions and they never produce a female. Let's see if we can find a Kadu lair. Shell pads, by the way, are, are primates. Veermox are the biggest primate on Naboo. 
and they're vicious. But they also have a bug. So for whatever reason, they can run faster than a person in a vehicle. So you really want to avoid Vermox. Nunas are turkeys. I just added my pet to my group. Let's see if I get a Kadu mission. A Gualma lair. That should work. And actually, there is one nice thing about having a creature pet is it will actually, f it's raining inside. It must, there must be like a plumbing leak or something. Hopefully that was a fresh water line. So where I was going with the handy feature thing, if you have a creature pet, you can dismount and run through a building. And then once you get to the other side, you can mount it back up. Whereas if you had a vehicle you would have to dismount, put the vehicle away, and then pull it out again once you get to the other side. Or just drive around the building altogether. Let's actually just go to the bottom. I kind of like the styling of the Gualmas. I'm not really sure why. I think it kind of just looks nice. So if you forage through a lair, you will be able to have it or have your character find something. So you can find eggs, so you can get eggs and you can sell them or use them as a, if you're a medic. Eggs are also useful for a chef. And you can also get random things like I have this. Nope. Sample of live bees. Now, as an artisan, an artisan can make. A Nemodian birdcage at some point Oh, a creature habitat. An engineered creature habitat will keep a small sample of creatures alive and well for an extended period of time. You can release these creatures into the wild if you want. So you can take these random organisms that you get. Oh, look at that, fumbus. So you can take the random creatures that you get from a lair and yeah, they would kill me instantly. You can take the random creatures that you get from a lair 
and you can put them into a creature habitat and then put them on display inside of your house. And if you get bees, they actually sort of fly around. There aren't really any other sort of animated things for for your house. So I think it is pretty nifty. I wonder if Alexandra's Disco Zool Now let's tell him to stay. Let's turn that off. Oh, I can go inside. And it's raining inside. He also has a leak. I really like this style of house because... Boom. So, you get a really nice view. And this is player housing. So, oh wow. I don't know who this person's house is that I'm currently invading. But I rather like this design. Refrigerator. Shabby chic chest. Oh, it looks like an oven. This is nice. What else do they have going on? Wookie Life Day Orb. That's a special special object that they give out. Dancing poles. Oh, come on. Who is this person, really? This is a nice setup they got going on here. What? I'm totally getting distracted here. But this is pretty awesome. I mean, don't you think? Oh, and this person is apparently a fisher because these fish are what you get after you fillet a fish. This is a nice setup here. Hopefully this person doesn't find me running around their house. See now, isn't this an amazing house? Back on the live server, I actually had... Oh, there's my mission. I actually had one of these houses near the lake retreat on Naboo. And man, it was hard to place because the lake retreat is super hilly. Oh, there are lightsaber crystals. So here's a Nemodian birdcage and lightsaber crystals for lighting and ambiance, apparently. But I'd think this is just a great floor design okay so you stay there a bachelor bachelor 
no females. Typically, typically with these creatures, you get bachelors and And they're dancing. <laughs> I bet somebody could make that into a music video. Typically, you get bachelors and females. And if you have a female, you can use the forage option to harvest milk. And... And um, that's another valuable resource. So let me get my probot out. Oh, and this is another pretty handy feature. If you have a droid with scout abilities and you have a scout, you can actually get a harvest module. So you can have the droid harvest the meat, bones, or hide from, an, from a creature for you automatically without you actually having to perform the action. And if you get one with a combat module it will have an attack rating higher than one. So this guy here has damage of 111 to 117. That's pretty not bad for a medium end probot, especially one that's not fully dedicated to combat. So I've got auto repair, combat, and harvest in the same droid. So that is that is pretty wonderful. So I'm telling him to harvest bone, and I'm telling him to auto harvest. Now I tell him to guard me. without anything selected. And my probot is doing damage. And you see that it just harvested the creature for me. So I got 84 points of harvesting experience without actually having to do anything. So this is basically how you work up your hunting tree. And so we have two trees that use the same thing. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. The exploration and hunting both use scouting experience. So you can see that this is actually growing bigger. And if I were using traps, which I'm not because my inventory is full. And it would seem my probot killed it before I got to throw a lot of traps. Oh, also, it has an item storage compartment, and 
it has auto repair so if we you turn on auto repair which is good and then it has harvested 128 bone and 236 hide which is quite impressive for for a droid So if you can tank it, all you have to do is throw traps repetitively. So now I need to tell him to stop guarding me with stay. I said stay. You still following me? Stay. Okay, it took that time. Now when he's staying, he will not guard me. Which means that, excuse me, he will not attack whatever attacks me. So now I'm watching around the layer here and some yellow dots will appear and then I will hit my piecing macro which is a recursive macro that spams the piece which is something to get you out of combat. Okay, now I can turn on guard. Follow, guard. I haven't set up any macros for pets yet. So that didn't work out right. For whatever reason, Put all of the traps on bottom. You know, I didn't even check to see if there were any females, and that was the reason why we came out here. Bachelor, 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 bachelor. Don't mind my dogs. I was hoping to show you how to milk. You have to have an herbivore female. We have herbivores, but so far this... <laughs> so far this lair has not produced any females. And I was not paying attention. And I fell down. So it actually took out all of my remaining health. Good thing this particular video was not a combat video. So having a scout droid is actually pretty handy and all they really require if they have an auto harvest module, combat module and a scout module is 
a droid battery, which an artisan can make, a novice artisan. And that is a pretty small deal, right? So if we come over here to artisan, Okay, maybe it wasn't novice. Okay. Engineering 1 provides you with a droid battery. So all you have to do is make a few of those and you can keep your droid happy. I don't think it was I don't think my droid was participating in that oh come on run away let the droid do all the work So I did attack it with my weapon, I just didn't do the animation. And you can actually see there will be a little drop above its head every now and then. Where it's healing itself. I'm going to be explaining these macros when I get to doing combat missions. I think for the next one, I'm going to tell my droid to go in first and do all the tanking. So let's stand up. Now, go do some damage. And actually, I'm going to switch weapons to carbines. And it's actually doing a pretty good job of tanking. I mean, it's... <laughs> and it harvested. It's great. So I'm going to be watching around the area for little yellow dots. When the yellow dots appear, I'm going to hit peace. If you don't have one of these macros yet, you hit clear and then peace a bunch of times. Now the first spawn that the lair will do will be when it gets to just about here. And then the next spawn will be just about over here. So I'm actually going to switch to my pole arm. And... Because I do more damage with my pole arm than I do with my carbine. So this part will go by faster. So I just hit it for 800 some odd points. I 
Okay, so now there's yellow scattered about. Come on, I typed. And actually, I'm going to switch back over here, tell him to tank. I actually did tell you to do stuff. Actually, I'm going to pull back some. That way I'm at a more better range for combat. Oh, and I didn't even check to see if there were any other females here. Shell pot. Okay, this is the part where you actually fire. And there you go. So combat in the lower levels is not super exciting. And it would seem that I've cleared out all of the creatures from the mob. Ooh. Peace out. Ooh, that was a close call. So, when you clear out one of the one of the spawns, you want to come over and do a search lair. So you begin to search for lair. This is part of the forage. Capabilities. You didn't find any of interest of inside the lair. That just means you failed. So persistence is key.
Oh, now it says there is nothing of interest in the lair. So, that means we are done with that one. So, let's put that away, pull that out. Hey, wait a minute. Do not have... Somebody came by and killed one of my creatures. That's rude. So, I've covered all of the basics of Scout in what was undoubtedly a super duper exciting video. So, we're going to call this the end of this episode. In the next episode, we are going to be covering the medic profession. What you do with it, how you use it, and how to progress in it. And, of course, that will be a two-parter also. So hit subscribe so you can keep up with this series. We're going to be doing a Let's Play and a tutorial on the majority of the professions, including the theme parks and, and all of that stuff. So hit subscribe, hit like if you like my robot, and have a nice day.